All right, now I'm live. That look great. Yep. Yay! Yeah, there we go. All right. <clears throat> All right, hello, my name is uh, Greg Rubendahl. Uh, I'm uh, the boys director of coaching at Elk Grove uh, Soccer. Uh, and today we are gonna go through the nuts and bolts of uh, a video analysis program, um, identifying, developing, and implementing a program within your club. Um, this is uh, the culmination of my master coach diploma work as well as developing it within the club. Um, this is a blueprint, if you will, uh, and a roadmap for how to begin and integrate an analysis program within your club. Uh, it, there's a lot of things that go into it, so I'm not here to discuss specific products, uh, computer types, things of that nature. It's all gonna be the process of how you get one of these things uh, up and going. Uh, and the somewhat pitfalls uh, that you need to be aware of as you're developing this for your club. Okay, so recently, obviously, we had the U-17 Women's World Cup, uh, where the U.S. team was eliminated in the first round after winning the first game and then losing the next two. Uh, and in talking with uh, Anson, um, Soccer America came across and one of the things that he brought up was looking at the genetic talent pool and the future of our players. Um, we have the talent, we have the athleticism, but not necessarily the game intelligence. Um, this comes from a culture of soccer in our country where players don't watch the game. Uh, this is uh, prevalent on both the boys and girls side, uh, men and women. It's a cultural revolution that here in the States we're looking to go and video analysis and making the video that they watch impactful to the individual is a way to go about and do that. So <clears throat> when we plan our future, uh, recently the 2026 World Cup uh, was announced. We'll be co-hosting with Canada and Mexico and we have a, a little question here. Do we have the 2015 failure of not making the World Cup uh, or not reaching our full potential uh, in the next World Cup cycle in 2022. Obviously in 2026 we're hosting on the men's side and then also looking at the Women's World Cup next summer in France uh, where they've been doing very very well uh, but may uh, have point to some issues in the future where some youth team failures at the World Cup level and even at the Conca gap level are coming. So what future will we get? So the question is, why do we need video analysis? Um, and the question, the answer uh, is many fold, but to help develop our club curricula, uh, I think it's important that as we go through each club has developed a, a way of, of education and how they want to go. And a video analysis program will help go ahead and do that for you. Um, also to develop your club structure in how your curriculum is expressed and who does what within your organization um, to improve the teaching methods of your coaches uh, and the effectiveness that it has on it on your players we're now embarking on a very unique time for players and player development where they're highly visual uh, and can uh, process lots of visual information very very quickly but may not know how to compartmentalize or organize that information. Uh, looking also to improve our coaching both in trainings and in games, uh, making sure that we have the highest effectiveness and, and achieving our goals once we have that uh, structured curriculum and, and uh, lesson plans. Also as we go in and giving the feedback and mentoring of players and showing them what they do well and what they may uh, have some areas of opportunity it's important to use this video and, and be able to show them and not just tell them uh, from that aspect. Uh, going from there is also now taking that into the planning phases. What are they going to do on their own to help develop themselves uh, to give them 
uh, achievable aims and goals to both work in both on the training grounds, but also in games and match situations and try and improve their understanding of possibilities when they are on the field. The, and then of course, this is for specifically our youth soccer environment in Northern California, but this goes uh, across the board nationwide. Uh, it's a global movement uh, and you'll see as we talk what the needs are and how uh, quickly it has spread. So why focus on video analysis and developing this platform? Well, research tells us that visual feedback is the preferred method for most uh, children. Uh, and this will be able to uh, uh, accommodate the learning styles of the modern player where they're able to, to again, process this information really quickly. Uh, it also allows them to, have, to uh, get, retain the information and become engaged in the learning process. Um, there's a massive shift within the educational environment is that players will only learn things that they want to learn. So to give them an engaging environment where you're not pushing information into them, but you're allowing them to pull information out of things that they're looking for and seeing uh, is a way to, to get them on their level. This also goes through you know, the digital age and, and the millennial child who has a deep understanding of technology, uh, far, far more than generations previously, and they are leveraging that in, in terms of how they learn. And then obviously the trends in sports science as they go through, um, this is a, a massive push uh, in the sports science field and identifying and, and giving the analytics and what's going on in games and trying to break it down to have maximum effectiveness and efficiency. So the objective of this, uh, of any project, again, is to ide uh, identify, develop, and implement a video analysis platform for your soccer club. So we've identified the problem and how do we go about doing this? Um, it's a little bit more than just filming a game, uh, going into the classroom or uh, somebody's house or uh, a pizza parlor and watching a game together and then stopping and talking to a whole bunch of players. Uh, they may not get that and not be able to concentrate. So how do we really go through this? So <clears throat> first and foremost, why would we use video analysis? Um, there's a lot of ways and reasons to use video. Um, in the Facebook world, it's a matter of marketing either your club, yourself, your individual skills, uh, your knowledge. But uh, in this regard, we're looking at analyzing for improved performance in different areas. Uh, so starting up here at the top, we have match analysis, so improving the games. Are we trying to improve the training of the team and uh, observe behaviors as we, they go through? Uh, the big push now is also using video for coach assessment and evaluations. So to be able to give uh, significant feedback to coaches within real time environments uh, and not something that's artificial. Uh, you can use video analysis for testing and testing purposes uh, or as you go through your individual player evaluations. So maybe you've integrated testing and then also uh, filming uh, players in practices and in games and giving them a, an assessment to allow them to, to plan for the future. You could go as far as developing uh, a club YouTube type channel uh, to promote and market uh, games and uh, ideas. As I discussed, uh, social media is probably the biggest one that video is used uh, for and it's in small little bite-sized packets that may not have context when you go uh, uh, looking at the bigger picture. Um, again, as you're looking at in looking at individual training, whether it's individual training uh, exercises or, or um, methods or just getting out there and, and tracking your own uh, improvement. This is the area probably the one that is most important for us from a club uh, standpoint is curriculum development, is taking what is on paper and giving it life, getting it onto the field and being able to express uh, what it is that we're trying from a living uh, document. Uh, at Once you have that curriculum, obviously you can no now go into more depth and just define your club style of play. Uh, and more importantly, and we'll talk about your team style of play, how does it relate? And then finally using video to create highlight filming films 
to be able to go into recruiting and scouting, whether it's for college uh, opportunities, whether it's uh, um, in other areas. Uh, so this is, you know, you're recruiting or scouting opponents. So using video has many, many different ways. So the question becomes, which are of these are you going to use? Um, what are you going to do? Who's going to do it? Why are you going to do it? How are you going to do it? When are you going to do this? And then where? So within each one of these contexts, you aren't doing these aspects just to do them, but they have purpose. And each act in and of itself is uh, a project that you're going to be working on. Okay, so what is it that is going to be required to satisfy all these different things? Well, first and foremost, again, you have to, as a club director, coach, you have to know and understand what is your club's mission, vision, and philosophy. This is going to be expressed through the video and the development of what you're trying to express for your teams. Uh, understanding your club's style of play. What are the, what's the archetype? What's the goal? How do your teams want to play from a uh, ideal sense. And then looking at from a lofty overall cultural goal is for your specific team with the players that you have and the, the teams and levels that you're going, how are you going to play? Can, how can you fit towards that ideal of what you're trying to do at, at a club level? And then as you're going through is you need to understand what are the needs of the different game models. What's the difference between the U9, U10, 7v7 games and the 9v9, U12, and 11s, or U13 versus U17, U19, uh, and understanding what are the needs of the game models, how and what are you going to be looking at in each one of those and focusing on in a progressive sense that you have a long-term goal in mind. Um, once you, you look at not just the game model, but also what's the differences in the curriculum? What are the emphasis uh, that you have placed in each one of those categories? And it's extremely important that you understand uh, what your objective is for that year or for that set of years, and then building towards a, an ultimate goal. Um, and so from that curriculum is you have your annual plan. You're looking at what are my annual learning outcomes? What am I organizing? How many games do I have over the course of the year? How many training sessions? And what am I realistically going to be able to accomplish, not just with the team, but with the individual players? So when you look at the process of video analysis is there's a lot of different steps that you need to take into consideration when you're analyzing a match. Uh, first and foremost, the planning uh, and the scheduling of this. Uh, is it something that you do once every three months? Is it once a month? Is it every game? Uh, it's on the schedule, so how do you schedule it? And then how are you going to film it? Is it on a high pod camera? Is it from the sideline with an iPhone or other uh, uh, smart uh, mobile device? Um, is it with an iPad? Is it you know, with a GoPro, there's so many different ways to actually film the games. Then from that film, how are you going to move that into the analysis phase? Does that video need to be compressed and then uploaded before it's analyzed? Can you take that raw video and put it directly into computer and to a program to start breaking it down right away? Depends on the program that you have. Then once you've analyzed that and you've broken it down into little pieces, you have to uh, organize what it is that you're looking at. You have to identify you know, the problem areas. Is this something that's based on your curriculum, your curriculum development, that you're focusing only on these things that are from your training environment? Or are you uh, organizing it for elite competition and looking at uh, potential uh, opportunities in development for the future? For your team. Uh, and then once you've organized it and you've created it into a nice little packet, you're going to share and present it with your group. Okay. Um, from that sharing, presenting, okay, how do you publish it? How do you share it? Um, do you put it on a YouTube? Is it hosted on a, a club website? And then finally, reviewing this whole process and being able to refine and do it better the next time. And so again, depending on what 
the, the different areas are that we're using video for, you still have those six questions that you have to answer. And the reality of it all is this share and present part is the part really that matters to the player, to the coach, to the stakeholder, whether that's your directors or your, your fans, your parents. Um, you have to be able to create it into a package that uh, is usable. And so the question is, how are you going to deliver this information? Are you going to put it in a PowerPoint? Uh, are you going to use an online platform? Um, how are you, are you going to present it uh, in an office type setting? Uh, or are you going to share it on an online platform to allow everybody to view it and then uh, watch it through their own eyes and see what they see? So there's a lot of different ways to, to take this in. Okay, so the key here is to make a plan and have a timeline as you go. So understand, you know, you've decided to embark on this endeavor. Uh, how much time do you have to dedicate this? Is this something uh, that you alone are driving or are you creating a team? And who are the primary drivers of this project? Somebody who's in interested and invested in the success of the development of a program like this and its sustaining its sustainability after you uh, go through the first couple of hoops and hurdles. Uh, what are the resources that you have at your disposal uh, as a club, as a team, uh, as a parent possibly? Is Do you have the necessary equipment? Uh, what do you have? Uh, I've seen some very, very interesting uh, uses of uh, painter poles or uh, and uh, mounted GoPros done from the sideline or from behind the goal. Uh, there's a, a myriad of ways to, to go about doing this. So what's the most uh, accessible for you? And then in terms of finances, are you looking to invest in equipment that the club owns? Is this something that a team owns? Is this something that an, uh, an individual buys and uses? Um, how are you going to organize that? Uh, is there a, a pot for this, or are you going to have to raise the funds? Now, and then also, are you using your paid staff members, uh, your coaches, your directors to drive this program, or are you looking specifically for volunteers to come in and spend some time to help develop this program? Uh, there's, there's pros and cons to using both uh, and to leveraging that to have take ownership of somebody who can do it where this is their primary job and responsibility. So as we're going through here, what are the obstacles that you're going to have to overcome um, while going through this? Uh, identifying all these resources and the people who are really interested in uh, is a major obstacle because that you have to be uh, willing to stay the course and to be consistent with it. it is not an easy process to go through because there's a lot of different uh, variables that you're going to go through. And then once you find uh, and identify a program, what kind of training are you going to provide to those people who are invested in the pro program project? How often are you going to meet? What type of uh, unity are you having and how are you going to follow through with these programs? So when you look at all the different analysis type tools, the question is, you know, what kind of program are you going to select? Are you going with analysis software that's either online, which means that you're limited by your bandwidth and your internet speed, or are you going with something that has a subscription and it's offline? Um, there's pros to each. Obviously, if you're offline, um, the con is that you most likely only have one license and it's restricted to that device or an individual. So it's not able to be shared. So there's a lot of uh, uh, responsibility for that, for those who have off -lice, offline licenses to be able to follow through with the task at hand. If you're going online, as I said before, now you're looking at, you're sharing, but it's gonna be dependent on your bandwidth. Uh, how are you producing things? How are you sharing them? Um, there's a lot of pros to having online uh, uh, sharing, but the restriction is that you're not going to have a lot of follow through if you have massive swaths of people uh, looking at information and, and you're only going to have maybe a 10, 20, 30 percent return. So it's, it, it's a little bit challenging in that regard.
Okay. And now as you're going through, who is the one who's going to be driving this analysis for you? Um, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can have your in-house analyst. This is somebody who would uh, work throughout through the office, whether that's a director uh, or an actual video an, uh, analyst on staff. Uh, maybe somebody who has uh, digital media experience and has a, a pretty good understanding of programming uh, and can whip these things out in almost real time. Um, the again the issue with any type of in-house analysis is how many hours per week are you having a person or multiple people dedicate to this and can you make it sure that it's consistent across the board uh, week in week out uh, you can have your coaches come in or offline break down the videos film it and then give the presentations uh, the pros of this obviously is that they'll know their team and they know what they're looking for uh, but uh, obviously the con for this is the consistency of the message from a club standpoint may be missed if there's not a significant coach education pathway on how to read games if there's not uh, oversight on what to do and how to do it uh, in the training environment and then what actually happens in game are the things that are the key moments really brought out um, so a, in the coach analysis phase, you would definitely want to have uh, some type of oversight and collaboration with either other coaches or directors within a club. Uh, you can also have your players, um, especially if you have an online platform, much more difficult if you have an offline uh, platform that's, and you have that many different licenses. But having players watch games and analyze themselves, there's massive uh, research that says that players who go and break down their own performances are, are going to have a much higher likelihood to remember the things that they find within those games, uh, within those events. So <clears throat> identifying, watching game, and finding a couple of things throughout the course of a match that they notice, things that they really enjoyed, so three maybe strengths, and then three areas that they want to improve in watching a match on their own, and then they can kind of frame their uh, development plans from those things. Finally, obviously, if you have an, uh, an online uh, analysis software, there are quite a few companies who uh, you can outsource the analysis to. And for a minimal game fee, they will break it down. Uh, the con with this is that they're going to be very, very um, uh, rigid with the types of tags that they're going to be able to do. Uh, you're probably only going to get highlight type films out of it uh, on the first surface, but it might be able to point to a deeper analysis that goes on the second go around. So being able to outsource and, and organize it that way, uh, you can take a deeper analysis without having to do the basic general tagging. Um, here's just a, it's not for in no significant order, uh, different companies and projects and programs that are out there that do different type of analysis software. Uh, I've looked through all of these. Um, y Scout and Instat are professional uh, scouting and uh, uh, identification modules that people will use in, in, from a global standpoint in terms of tracking their players. Um, that's much different than, say, a Game Breaker uh, or and Game Breaker is the professional or collegiate level. Um, there's also another one, Match Analysis, where they break down the games and it's very, very sophisticated. It's um, cost prohibitive in a lot of cases because the licenses are extremely expensive. Uh, a little bit lesser version of that would be the My Video An An uh, Analyzer, um, uh, which is a newer one that's coming out uh, that's interesting. Focus uh, is the online platform for game. Uh, or sorry, is an offline platform uh, that was used through the United Soccer Coaches. Uh, and so for those who have gone through those courses and maybe have tested and tried that one, the Forma uh, is one that's a multi-sport, iPad-based uh, analysis software. Uh, and then you have a couple of online ones, Huddle, Crossover, VLoop, VidSwap, uh, and the like. Um, so those ones are a little bit varied in their experience and their, their abilities. And then you have your iMovie, Movie Maker, Filmora, or any type of 
a computer-based uh, video or movie type of editing software um, that you could use. Adobe obviously has some uh, products as well. So all of those, you know, you're really going to have to assess on what kind of computer you have, what kind of camera you have, what's going to fit uh, best. Um, so doing a little bit of research on best practices with each one and, and doing the research is going to be uh, essential on that end. So once you get into your developing of your program, okay, so the question is, you know, how are you going to film? You know, is it, and what is the format? What kind of software are you using? So once you've established what it is that you're using, the question is, where are you going to film from? How are you going to film? Uh, how quickly can you get it from the camera to the player, to the coach? Um, and the turnaround time is essential. If you can't get things within, uh, uh, within a couple of days, then the impact of that information diminishes uh, significantly. Um, it's really, as I said, a process of trial and error uh, and finding out what works best uh, based on the variables that you have within your situation. Uh, I would recommend stick with what is simplest and easiest to start and then develop from there uh, as you go in. Okay. So, and again, you know, you're doing your research and you're identifying what is the best thing for your situation and what your program goals are for your video analysis program. Um, you can go look at it from a top-down, whole club, holistic type of event, or you're just going with individual player, individual teams, uh, and you're uh, in that regard. <clears throat> and then finally, you know, as you're going through here, it's a really important that you have your tags that are uh, looking at different game models. Um, what you're going to look at and the intensity in which you observe a U17, U19 level match uh, versus a U10, U12 level match. I think there's value within filming both, but you're going to have to have completely different identifications for what you're looking at. And again, this kind of goes on your curriculum and your curriculum model. So you have to define what is it for you important to know at that given age. Okay, so here we have an example uh, that we have just within our U910 program. Um, So again, as you're going through here, you're using your freeze moments to uh, identify, capture moments and things that you're looking at from a, a club development standpoint. This one was done specifically looking at our U9 players uh, and what to recognize at the youngest level in terms of uh, players and player development. So being able to pick it out look in and see what you can do with each um, and being able to have your players recognize what it is that you're looking at and looking for that. Okay. And so this, this is just a small little example for, for one of these. So <clears throat> the key is, again, you know, for your program, uh, whatever your club values are and, and what you're looking at is it can vary by age group. Um, there's a lot of different um, ideas. But the question is, you know, how do you sustain this program over time, uh, not just developing it, but continuing it? So again, identifying your program stages of progression. What are you going to do uh, from the beginning and starting and identifying what you're going to start with and how you're going to film and then going into the next steps uh, in a timeline type uh, process. Uh, identifying your funding streams. If you're trying to get people to come in and do these things, um, you may have to identify new funding streams within your program to be able to, to uh, afford to be able to continue to do this on a larger scale. Uh, if it's a one-off, it's not as difficult as if it's something that's consistent and long term. Uh, 
one of the areas that we thought was uh, important is identifying somebody who's the head and lead for video analysis within the club, um, not just having it as a uh, you know piecemeal through all the directors, but having somebody who is able to go through and identify all these different um, uh, needs of the club and go and find the right products and the right you know, uses of it. And then once you have you know these ideas within it is launch a beta test with a select team or a group of teams uh, with a couple of coaches that maybe have um, uh, an idea that they are interested, uh, intrigued in being able to do this and want to learn the technology that goes along with it. Um, and then once you have that beta test, you, you develop, a, develop a system for your coaches, for your who's uh, motivated and really interested in something like this. And then what can you do for your other coaches who aren't necessarily as um, easily uh, motivated for these types of things because maybe technology is a little bit more uh, a difficulty for them. So once you have all this and you've developed and trained your coaches, you know, you launch your program and then from that program, it's continuous upkeep and follow through. This is a growth learning process. Your, uh, your curriculum is not a stagnant, uh, static process. Your players grow through these years. So uh, you may have things that are consistent at different age groups, different game models, different genders, but the reality is that you're looking at your players on a longitudinal type of way and what's their growth through this whole process. So it has to be complete, uh, continuously um, developed uh, to make sure that it really has a good impact on your players. So again, uh, if we're looking at what are the best practices in, in developing uh, a program, identifying a development committee, people who are uh, clear stakeholders in this uh, program and have them come up with uh, an, an action plan and then also <clears throat> periodic meetings where they're reviewing and refining what they're going through. Uh, once you also have this and you integrate your match observations live uh, and what you see in video into your curriculum, everything that you're doing here should be reinforcing what you're trying to expose uh, your players to throughout their learning uh, environment. And then layer in the pro projects and concepts for your players. Um, it's, it should follow along the, um, the curriculum and the training environment that you're creating for your players and then developing it within uh, your annual plan and your model. Um, so as you're going in, it may be the same time of year that you go over the same type of pro projects uh, and programs and then later in the year you're going through those uh, separately with the individual players to kind of hammer those through. Uh, it's I believe essential to create some type of presentation template that all the club and, and coaches can use and move from uh, so that everything has a consistent look and feel and so that when uh, when you're presenting you can share amongst your coaching staff. And it should be based on your stage of development, having a, a presentation template that's the same for your 77, 99, 11 v 11 game models, because the extensive uh, or the, the, the knowledge that is going to be expressed in each one of those should be similar. So um, in those age groups, but different, definitely different uh, across age groups. The, uh, younger players are going to need much simpler, basic, rudimentary type of knowledge, whereas your your middle school, high school, collegiate age uh, players are going differently. And then again, <clears throat> is educating the staff on how to analyze games and then create and give presentations. Um, you need to have your in-service uh, coach education uh, um, and then also encourage them to go on their own uh, to help analyze games live and then analyze that same game in video and have them look at the differences. What they thought they saw live may be different when they go back and they watch it on the video. And then again, as you go through this is having that shared database to find the consistencies along your curriculum that you want to, uh, you want to uh, create your culture of your club and your club environment. 
So <laughs> that's uh, in essence um, the the process of identifying, developing, and implementing a, a video analysis program. Um, it, again, it goes back to uh, what are you trying to accomplish when you go through these different processes. Um, there's some that uh, that are very very successful, um, but I think when you start looking at it as a club wide uh, initiative, you're going to have a much deeper impact across all players within your club and not just within the ones that have a comfortability with this. So, <clears throat> all right, so if there are any questions as you guys uh, have them, um, go ahead and uh, pop them up. Obviously, uh, in doing a, a webinar, um, there's a massive database of these different aspects um, that we can talk about, but I think it's really important that whatever you're looking at uh, for, your, for your program, it's based on what your curriculum philosophy culture is, and then just go from there. So a couple, couple questions. So uh, just, uh, I think it was Gavin Taylor talking about injury monitoring and tracking of athlete development. Um, it's a huge aspect, especially when you have players who are at different uh, ages, uh, levels, they have different body types. Um, and so tracking going through uh, what's called the FMS, uh, functional movement screen, uh, is something that's a little bit cost prohibitive for a lot of places, but being able to analyze the players as they go through uh, and see biomechanically what is it that may be slowing them up. And especially on a physical side that, you know, observing players, you know, I think once they start seeing themselves uh, perform, they're able to self-regulate with a lot of uh, regularity as you go through. All right, and as I look, uh, I'm not seeing too many comments. Um, if you do have uh, any questions, um, I'll go ahead and type in uh, my email, uh, g-r-u-b-e-n-d-a-l-l at elkgrovesoccer.com. Um, if anybody who's interested in, in getting more information on any one of these aspects and looking to uh, go forward, please feel free to contact me. Um, I'm, in <clears throat> no, I'm in no way a professional at all of this video analysis uh, programming. However, I believe that it is the way as we go into the future uh, for our players to start reading the game in a more significant way. And I think it's going to start with coaches and directors really articulating the vision of what we want to be uh, day in, day out, that will allow that. All right. Uh, and if that's 